Hey YouTube, this is Ian from Big Rock Adventure. And this afternoon I was packing, reorganizing my motorcycle luggage, my day riding supplies, and I thought I'd take the opportunity to show you guys what I take with me on a day ride. This is not camping, this is just riding for a long day on an adventure bike or a dual sport bike. Show you everything I take, and of course this was also a great opportunity for me to go through all my supplies and make sure that I had everything I need. This is something I recommend that you guys do um, pretty often because you tend to raid your supplies or maybe you change bikes or you change luggage or you use or you, some, your buddy took some of your stuff on a ride when he broke his shit or whatever it is. Um, so it's a good idea to do this now and then like I'm doing it. I've already discovered a few things that I'm missing and a few things that I don't need. Um, so anyway, let's jump in and get started. Okay, so a few notes before we begin. Like I said, this does not going to include camping or overnight gear because that's going to be a separate video. This is also not going to include the obvious things like a helmet, um, you know, your wallet, your keys, your cell phone, things like that. This is just the stuff mostly that you're going to keep in the motorcycle or take with you on every ride that's not so obvious. The other thing is this is going to vary a lot depending on what kind of motorcycle you ride. Now, if you have multiple motorcycles, you're probably going to need to have a tool pack and sort of necessities packed in each motorcycle because they all take different kind of tools. For instance, my BMW takes a lot of Torx bits. It also has tubeless tires, so I don't need to carry tubes. So every motorcycle is going to be different and you're going to have to customize it. It's hard to make one setup or one set of tools or one set of equipment that you can move from bike to bike because every bike is so freaking different and that makes it a challenge. I'm just going to kind of start at the top here and go through this list real quick. So some of the stuff is obvious, but bear with me. So I never go on a ride without a camel back full of water because the truth is you don't know what's going to happen. Maybe you're just going to take a short afternoon, afternoon ride, but maybe you decide to go on the trail and maybe you get a flat tire. Maybe you get stuck and you need to go through a lot of water. Maybe it heats up, whatever the case may be. Um, don't run out of water. It's a really shitty situation to be in. So I'll always take plenty of water. I like to use Camelback because then I can save room in my bags. And plus, I like to be able to drink while I'm riding. In terms of changing temperatures on your ride, so I choose to use a heated vest liner. I'd plug it into my motorcycle and I feel like I'm riding in a, in a sauna going down the road, which is really nice for those cold evenings or rainy days or whatever it is. You can use any sort of layering system you want, um, different mid layers, base layers, or whatever. The point is that the temperature is going to change on your ride, so you need to have some sort of layer to make yourself warmer. Okay, moving over here, I, I like to ride usually with a dual sport helmet, um, which has a visor on it, but I can also put goggles on, which is great for riding off road because the problem with the dual sport visor is fogging up and then riding in the dust. It doesn't really protect the dust from getting in your eyes, so um, goggles are a good thing to have. I'm a huge fan of the quick straps, which um, you basically put these little pucks on your helmet and it just Velcro and snaps on and off. Um, uh, I always cut the straps of my goggles off and put on a quick strap. So you guys should check into that. I like to carry a dark, a tinted pair and a, and a light colored pair because if you ride into the, into the night, but you still need goggles, um, you're going to be out of luck if you don't have that, that clear pair. Okay. So this is something that some of you might think is overkill, but this is one of those, uh, this is a, one of those battery uh, booster jumpers that you see that they sell like at, at Costco and you see them a lot of places. It's basically a huge power pack, but it, it has uh, the ability to put a ton of power to you to through the cable at once and you can connect it to your battery and jump start. Actually, you can use this to jump start a car. I've jump started a full size truck with this with this thing, believe it or not. I mean, look how big that is. These are like 60, 70 bucks. Um, Highly recommend having that because if your bike has a dead battery or your buddies does, you just hook this up to the battery um, and boom, you uh, you can um, uh, start your bike up without having to try to roll start it or something. On a big beast like this, this is a this is a good thing to have. It also has you know USB ports and 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 things like that for if you need to charge your phone or or whatever you might want to charge. 
Here I've got old t-shirts. Um, I'm using these as rags. You're always going to need rags because Rags are handy when you have to take off a wheel or you have to do some procedure on the side of the road or maybe you need to clean up your bike or whatever it is. You always want to have a couple rags with you. Here I've got a first aid kit. Um, it's pretty basic. Um, some people carry huge first aid kits. I don't tend to do that. Honestly, I rarely use it, but when you need it, you need it. So have a first aid kit with you. Important stuff to think about is bleeding control. Um, if you have any allergies, like if you're allergic to bee stings or anything like that, that's something you got to consider. This is a bag of nothing but straps. So I've got a variety of different rock straps. If you guys don't know about rock straps, I think it's ROX rock straps, or maybe it's ROK. I don't know. Really great. Uh, set of straps. I don't use bungee cords. They're too dangerous. Um, rock straps were great. I also have a bunch of like webbing straps and things in here. The reason you want to have a lot of straps is because if you break some of the mounting on your luggage or you just need to lash something to your bike or God knows, or hold something on straps are always come in handy over here. We've got, so again, my GS is a tubeless. So I'm using a, uh, I'm carrying a plug kit and an inflator. I'm going to be buying a smaller inflator because this thing is just way too big. But you need to have a way to pick, fix a puncture and air your tire back up. And sometimes the problem is seating the bead on the rim, right? And so you need to have some high pressure. Um, you can maybe do it with a hand pump, but I don't know. I just like to be able to set the set the compressor, the 12 volt compressor, and just let it sit there and do its work. Now, if you're riding a bike with tubes, this is going to be different. You're going to need to carry... Tubes. Yes. If you have tubes, you're going to need to carry spare tubes with you. Now, a lot of guys will just carry a 21 inch tube and they'll use that uh, in a pinch in their back tire. Um, I've done that. I've, I've, and it's worked, but it's, if you have the room, try to pack your, your rear and your front spare tubes with you. If you, if you can make a room for it. Okay. Let's talk about some accessories for you, the rider, the human being. So I like to carry a, a baseball cap, um, Sometimes I carry a full coverage hat, one you can fold up because when you're off the bike at a rest stop or a scenic area or having lunch or whatnot, you, you kind of want to be able to have a hat. Um, a couple of pairs of gloves is a good idea to have. I don't always carry, these are real heavy winter uh, waterproof gloves. I don't always carry those like in the summer, obviously I don't really need those, but uh, these are my vented sort of off-road gloves and then um, whatever gloves I'm riding in is the ones I take off in, but I, I like to carry at least one extra pair for changing temperatures. This is a, a balaclava for my for my neck to keep my uh, to keep my neck warm because that's a huge that's a huge source of a heat loss. Let's see what else is in my sort of rider's kit. I've got sunglasses here because a lot of times I wear sunglasses either when I'm off the bike or I can stick them inside my helmet instead of wearing goggles. Eye drops very very important to have eye drops because shit gets in your eye. You need to be able to clean it out. Um, hand sanitizer. Oh yes, that's like gold right now. I could sell that shit. Um, lotion tissue from Japan. I don't know, China, Korea. You don't have to have lotion tissue. If you have regular Kleenex, that'll work fine too. But you want to have Kleenex with you. Um, you can tell I have an Asian wife when I have all this stuff. Um, chapstick. Of course, you got to have Rocky Mountain branded chapstick. Ooh, fancy. Um, sunscreen. Bunch of different earplugs. I also have extra uh, uh, earbud uh, cover. I use Edimonic earplugs, or not earplugs, but um, what do you call them? The sound things. The thing that makes sound. Uh, you know, ear earphones, whatever. Uh, I have electrolyte pills. These are full of electrolytes in case I get dehydrated, so I carry those in those little bottles. Um, Let's see, I talked about the balaclava. Okay, so tire pressure gauge, very important. I like to take some energy gels with me in case I get um, run out of energy or get into a bad situation. Snacks, I usually carry more snacks than that. Uh, spot tracker, that's important. So this is a big one for me, a microfiber towel. You need a microfiber towel because you need to be able to clean your helmet or your, your goggle lenses or your windshield or whatever it is, your GPS. Um, most importantly, cleaning your helmet so you can see, because being able to see out of your helmet is a huge safety, safety issue. Okay. Moving back to kind of some tools and supplies. So this is, uh, this is some sort of like Velcro double wrap, double sided stuff that you can use. You, you can use this to wrap and secure things. It's really a handy thing to have. Someone got me that as a gift. Yeah, I can't believe I skipped over this. This is electrical stuff. So I've got all different kinds of sizes of fuses here because um, they have different size of fuses in motorcycles. 
I don't even know if the BMW has fuses, but whatever. Um, glass fuses, if you have like a 1950 KLR. Uh, you've got, I've got some jumper switches and different lengths of wire here that can come in handy. These are these posi lock connectors, which are really easy to use. You don't have to do soldering or or a crimping or anything, so it's, those are a really useful thing to have. Um, definitely have some electrical stuff with you, especially if you have an older bike. Um, bailing wire, uh, wire is always useful to have. Uh, zip ties, now on the bailing wire and zip ties, if you ride a KLR, you're gonna need way more than this, okay? And way more zip ties than that. This is the BMW level of zip ties. Uh, I've got a thing, this is actually a thing of uh, like JB Weld or Quick Steel or Steel Stick or whatever, you know, there's all different brands, but it's that epoxy stuff you can mix to repair a uh, hole in metal. I've never had to use it um, on the trail, thankfully, but it's good to have it. A uh, couple things of duct tape. What I do is I take duct tape and wrap it around like an old an old pen or, or something so you don't have to carry a big roll of duct tape. A couple hose clamps. Those can come in handy if for like fuel line or, or things like that. Uh, electrical tape. I've got some, some wire. This is a toe strap. <clears throat> so a toe strap is really useful to have because if your buddy, I actually had to tow someone out of the desert once a long time ago. And if you've ever had to do it, uh, that thing comes in, in real handy. This is just the bag that I keep all this stuff in. Okay, moving into tools. I'm kind of a minimalist when it comes to tools. I, I try to carry just what I need and, and not more because they, the weight really adds up and you don't use them that often, but when you need them, you need them. Um, you know, spoke wrenches, of course, this, these are useless on my BMW because the, the way the wheels are, they actually use uh, Torx bits to tighten the spokes. Um, so these need to go into somewhere else and, and leave this kit. Um, different uh, combination wrenches here. You're always going to need those. A pair of uh these tire spoons because even though my gs is uh tubeless and i'm not going to need to probably take the tire off the rim it's just a nice thing to have these are super light aluminum ones they have the they have the wrench here on the end um these are i forget what brand these are motion pro i think they're really good ones most most of you guys probably have these or if your buddy doesn't carry you know, the tire spoons, then you can save him and change his tire and he'll be in debt to you for the rest of his life. Uh, locking pliers. This is really important because locking pliers can be used as a shift lever. They can be used to repair things. Um, you always want to have a small pair of locking pliers with you. These are uh, Torx bits. So on a BMW, everything is Torx. Um, I've got a selection of sockets here that use this um, KTM orange wrench. I don't know if you should use orange KTM wrench with BMW, but you know, whatever. Uh, a couple of Allen keys, because even though my BMW is mostly Torx, the Allen keys uh, for like the hand guards and different accessories use Allen keys. Um, some screwdrivers and different bits. Um, I don't know why I had these in my kit. These are like different spark plug wrenches, probably from bikes I had like 10 years ago. So this is useless crap that needs to go away. Um, this I think this is to a KLR of all things. So I don't know why I have those. I can't get to my damn spark plugs anyway on this bike. Um, goes without saying, your owner's manual, uh, which a BMW, it's just a Starbucks gift card in there is all it is. And then you've got your registration and insurance. So I keep that under my seat. So that's kind of it for me. Now you're going to need to customize your kit based on your motorcycle, your style of riding, and things like that. A, a few other notes that I was thinking about. I don't carry all this in one pack. So I have different different pouches, different you want to pack stuff in a convenient way. So what I mean is like this stuff here that you need when you're riding, like your sunglasses and your chapstick and your gloves and and hat and all that kind of crap. Uh, food um, you want to keep like in your tank bag or in your jacket pocket or somewhere more accessible not buried inside of a tail bag or a pannier um, things like tools um, different supplies inflators whatever you can bury that stuff down in, in a tail bag or, or a pannier and you're not going to need it very much right so that's okay just for laughs this is the stock bmw toolkit they give you a wrench a screwdriver, and I guess that's it. I guess that's all they figure you need to carry on a BMW because you just call uh, you just call the uh, Hans from the dealer to come pick up your motorcycle and get escorted back in a BMW car. Um, these are they even give you little icons of where things go in case you had to figure that out. 
So yeah, that's my toolkit. So when you're designing yours, uh, really work on your bike with the tools you carry to see if you have the crap you need because you'd be surprised how sometimes how screwed up your kit can get. Just as I found out today with stuff that I don't even need anymore and stuff that I may be missing, like I need more Torx bits. And also think about the things that are keeping you safe, your spot tracker, your warm gloves, your your uh, extra layer for when it gets cold, your goggles so you can see. So think about safety, think about vision, think about um, the tools you need to get out of a bad situation, um, and don't ever count on your buddies to carry the stuff you need. That's a big, big mistake because... They may have not have their shit together or not have what they need, uh, and or you may not be riding with them. What if you're riding by yourself? So always be self-sufficient and have what you need to take care of yourself and your motorcycle um, no matter what happens. I hope you found this video useful out there, you guys. And uh, until next time, this was Ian from Big Rock Adventures. Please give the video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you already haven't. Uh, we'll see you next time. And sorry for the cell phone quality, but I just wanted to do this quick video. Um, Next videos that you have coming to you will be more professionally done. Okay, thanks. Bye. Hello, what? Who is this? The stock market crashed. I told you, buy low and sell high. I gotta make my GS payment over here. I gotta buy coffee. I gotta buy more fog lights for my bike. People would just subscribe to my channel and like my videos. Maybe I'd actually make some money off this thing. Well, you're, you know what? You're fired.